Greetings and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Vodcast podcast. What are you going to do about it? Oh, now that's much... Look like a bloody fool. What am I doing? Hey guys, uh, how are you, Billy Bumblers, doing this morning? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, we're gonna eat some cupcakes that my wife got me yesterday that are something I've been eyeballing for a while, but really hadn't thought about picking up because I'm trying to stay away from sugar. But she just keeps pulling me back in. And well, what are you gonna do about it? Anywho, the cupcakes in question right here, they are Reese's peanut butter flavored cupcakes by uh, Freshly's, Mrs. Freshly's. It's funny, I had a conversation recently a few weeks ago with a bunch of my friends. As we do, we were Zooming on a Saturday night and we were uh, trying to compare the quality of different companies. Like you got Little Debbie, you got Hostess, you got Drake's, you got Mrs. Freshly's, and I know I'm leaving one out. I can't remember what the last one is. Anywho, eventually we came to the decision that I, I believe Hostess was top notch. Which I kind of disagreed with. I, I think I, I prefer Drake's products. Um, Twinkies are cool. I like Twinkies. You know, if there's a Twinkie to be had, nowadays I would need it. But normally, you know, it's a Twinkie. It's a, it's a good time. It's a good time to have with your friends or just by yourself. I don't know. <clears throat> Without further ado, let's eat this cupcake. I'm not going to eat this whole cupcake. I'm going to eat a bite of this cupcake because it is uh, uh, eight or nine. Now it's got to be at least nine o'clock. That's right. I got up around eight. Ooh. Oh, they smell pretty good. Sometimes with these products, especially with Twinkies, they smell like chemicals. They just, just, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Like this doesn't smell like a cupcake. Oh, these are very attractive. I thought some of that was packaging, but apparently more of it was actually um, cupcake than I thought. The funny thing about it is the reason why I'm eating these today is because these are for Father's Day. My wife can't keep something like a gift for a holiday to save her life but as soon as she gets in her hand she's super excited whether it's a cupcake or whatever i don't know <laughs> let's try this out i kind of want to get some of the cream so i'm looking where they inserted injected the cream from but i can't oh there's a two little prong system here they must do it different than hostess hostess is a one <laughs> there's a little cross section for you I've discovered that when I'm eating things that are snacky peanut butter treats, you have to consume it start to finish before you can make a judgment on it. Because much like people, it's easy to judge a peanut butter treat from its appearance. But peanut butter is a flavor that you either go overboard with and you make it too unrealistic or you go underwhelming and you can barely taste it. But when a company like Mrs. Freshly's uh, puts out a worthy product, such as this cupcake right here, you listen to her. Now, if I'm scoring it, I'd give it about a seven. Um, it still has all the qualities of a Mrs. Freshly's or a Hostess or a Drake's or whoever you want to compare it to. Um, you're obviously not getting the freshest Miss Freshly. Um, you're getting it... Yesterday's video was an absolute disaster, but it was a weird day. Everything feels normal again today. Maybe I flip back to my dimension. I don't know how those things work. But isn't that a funny thing to think about that? Sometimes I think about the multiverse theory. Don't you? Oh, uh, Bob, I am so sorry. This camera is not level. I'll fix it in post. <laughs> um, the multiverse theory where... Anything possible, there's a universe for it within this giant multiverse that we all exist in. I, I fully, wholeheartedly believe in that. Because it's not beyond the realm of possibility. It's, it's, it's within reasonable grasp. Well, not grasp. I mean, you can't grab the multiverse. I guess you could. I'm grabbing it right now if you really think about it. I'm grabbing it now. I'm grabbing it now. I'm grabbing it now. See, what I'm saying is, is that uh, that which just happened right now, in an alternate, not an alternate, 
in one of the ultimate multiverses, which I guess would be an alternate reality to our reality. The same thing just to happen, except one beard hair was a, a billionth of a millimeter to the left. That's how vast I see the multiverse. It is so astronomically beyond comprehension, although I have seen it with my own two eyes in my mind. Actually, mine had just been the acid I was taking. I took this uh, last time I ever took acid in my life. I was tripping my ass off. It, it hit me hard. Me and a friend, I don't, I don't think he really cares if I tell his name here. Any, most of you probably know who it is anyway. But uh, a friend and I, actually two friends and I, um, split like, uh, I don't know, it was six or eight uh, tabs or whatever. And so I, I was poor at the time, but my friend, ah, fuck it, Corey, <laughs> gave me enough so that we had the same amount. I think it was one and a half each, or it might have been two each. I, I don't I don't remember exactly, but it was it was a small amount. I'd taken the first time I ever took acid, I took six tabs of acid. I'll tell you that story another time. But this time it was the last time. Brian took like four. He's a bigger guy, but he's not like, you know he's not a giant, but he's he's a tall, well built guy, you know. And he he went through the whole process with never feeling a thing. It hit Corey and I like a ton of bricks. I have never tripped so hard in my life. It hit me like a Mack truck. It was like, hey, what's going on? Hey, I ain't feeling anything. Oh, my God. And I remember at one point over the course of the night, I had to go be alone in a dark room, which was always a bad idea if you're tripping on acid, unless you've got a black light on. Then <laughs> the world is your oyster. When I closed my eyes because I couldn't take the world outside my eyes in the real world. So if I closed my eyes, it was like stepping into the multiverse. It was the multiverse is made up of billions and trillions and gazillions and googillions of, of televisions that are all, all interconnected on this one spinning ball. But the TVs independently spin and they spin in patterns as well. And they're as far as the eye can see. Uh, through all space and time. In that moment, I felt like God was showing me the secrets of the universe or the multiverse, and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad time. It was good up until then. It was good up until our friend Michelle started playing with the uh, the Howdy Doody puppet thing, the one, the tuxedo one. I can't remember what he's called. Uh, I'll put a picture of him up over there. That was that was when things started to go downhill. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very memorable night, and uh, I thought I'd share that story with you, because I have touched the multiverse. I am touching the multiverse. See what I'm saying? We're all touching the multiverse together. Remember yesterday when I was saying half of the shit that comes in my mouth is bullshit? Yeah, this is, I don't know, I just, I mean, this is a theory I do believe in, but I don't know how much truth there is to it. I guess it's something we will never, maybe, I don't know, maybe we will prove it in our time. Maybe someone watching this right now will be like, I'm going to prove you wrong, motherfucker. I'm going to grow up, I'm going to become a scientist, and I'm going to prove the multiverse theory, and I'm going to build a, a portal gun, <clears throat> and I'm going to have a, uh, a grandson come along my journeys with me. Oh, wait a minute, that's just Rick and Morty. <laughs> when the fuck's that show ever going to come back? You know, there's things in life that you wait for, that you're excited for. It, with me, it's always Star Wars. No matter what Star Wars coming out, I don't care if it's like a Star Wars pile of shit coming out January 13th. It's just like, yes, pile of shit from Star Wars. And that's the kid in me, because my, my youth was Star Wars from, you know, my earliest memory until this very moment, you know. But, but every figure, action figure, anywho. The fuck was I just talking about? Give me a second here. Rick and Morty. We wait in life for things like Star Wars. Um, there are a few things in life that you have to wait a little bit longer for. And uh, one of them is Rick and Morty. <laughs> Those seasons are so few and far between, but they're signed on for another like four or five more seasons. So it's exciting to know that it's coming. But Dan Harmon and... Um, Justin Roiland. Uh, Justin Roiland cracks me up. You should just look him up on YouTube. Oh, okay. Wait, <laughs> I'm getting out of control again. I need to write a note. I threw my fucking paper. I'm an asshole. Okay, if I forget to mention it later. Okay, two things. You should watch Sweetwater. Uh, Sweet Tooth. <laughs> Loki's on tomorrow. It's gone. It's gone. Whatever it was that I, I wanted. Oh, damn it. Fuck shit. Balls. Ass. So Stephen King 
The Dark Tower, uh, between book three and four, I believe it was like an 11, 12 year gap or something, something insane like that. George R. R. Martin, he's another one infamous for waiting years in between. Now, with, with, uh, with media, uh, not like literature, it makes sense because making a movie, making a record, that does take time. There's a process to go through, as it is with writing books. Don't get me wrong. I have written a book. I have published a book. I have released a book. People have bought this book. People have read this book. Not a lot. I mean, I could probably count them on maybe two hands. <laughs> However, I know that it's a process, but it's an understandably long process, especially like if, if, if you're like me, I have rewritten my first book three times because I can't get over it. I have the George Lucas, you know, thing where it's just like, nope, not good enough. Got to go back and fix it. Nope, not good enough. I finally laid that puppy to rest. I'm not touching that series again. If I ever write anything again, it's probably going to be children's books. But waiting isn't always the, the hardest part. Oh, wait, wait. It is the hardest part. That's right, Tom Petty. Let us know that. R.I.P., brother. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you guys go this morning. I just want to sit down and talk for a little bit. I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer. If you guys are loving watching these as much as I'm loving making them, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and hit the little bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and take care of each other out there. I'm Jason Oliveira, and I'll catch you in the next episode of the Vodcast Podcast. Take care, and boy howdy. <laughs>